Yes, then, YouTube. So, a brand new Aston Villa podcast brought to you by myself, Connor Wolf. Hence why the name of this podcast is actually an Aston Villa, the Wolf of an Aston Villa podcast. I don't know. I kind of thought it was like a cool play on words of my surname and then, of course, Aston Villa. So, a little bit of a background of myself. I'm a season ticket holder and I watch a lot of Villa podcasts. I do. I like a lot of them. And Aston Villa is my passion. So, I thought, you know what? I'm a FIFA content creator. So, let's branch out. Let's do an Aston Villa podcast. I have been thinking about doing it for quite a while so i thought you know what let's just take the jump and do it you know so if you are new around here please 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 drop a like on the video drop a comment down below i will reply to every single comment that you do have you might agree with my opinion on certain things or disagree let me know in the comment section i'm big enough and ugly enough to take your opinions you know i'm not i'm never gonna hate on anyone that's got a different opinion to me and also hit that subscribe button to my channel the first couple of podcasts will just be on YouTube for the time being until I can get everything sorted. I will have like a bit of a different layout on the sh on the um, the podcast and stuff like that. So then I can get it on Spotify. And also Luke Roper does sponsor my YouTube channel. So please do check out Luke Roper, Luke1977.com. Use the code WOLF20 at a checkout for 20% off absolutely everything that you can get off the website, including sale items. So today's podcast, the first one that I'm going to do is going to be a topic of conversation which I don't really like to do but I feel like we have to do it and that is why is Unai Emery trying his hardest and Monchi to bring Moussa Diaby to Villa Park now I think the answer is quite simple if any of you have watched Aston Villa for a while you will probably know what I'm talking about I feel like we lack so much pace in our team it is scary now i am a little bit biased with that because my brand of football that i would love to watch all the time is with pacey tricky wingers that's just kind of like the football i love to grow like that i grew up on grew up with and the football i love you know whether it be like a, a ronaldinho and neymar players of that ilk they are the type of players that i love and they bring me enjoyment on the football pitch. So, at Villa, we kind of haven't had many since Ashley Young left. I know Grealish was playing out on the wing, but he's not really a traditional winger in that sense. He's kind of like an inside playmaker. So, it's for us to be linked to a winger like Moussa Diaby, it gets me excited. You know, we did try and get Nico Williams, who I do think probably looking at the reports was Unai Emery and, well, not Monch at the time, but Unai Emery's number one target. But if any of you know how Bilbao operate, you know how hard it is to get... A, is it a Basque? I think they're called Basque. I don't know what the type of Spanish people are called. I think it's Basque players out of there. They are so loyal. Bilbao only use them players. They don't use like a Brazilian and stuff like that. So to get a player out of Basque, it's nigh on impossible. And of course, his older brother, Inaki Williams, does also play there, which probably adds into that as well. So why... Do I think Unai Emery is targeting Moussa Diaby? So to get things rolling, I'm going to show you Moussa Diaby's stats from last season in the Bundesliga. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Stats from the Bundesliga can be a little bit misleading. And I know the big elephant in the room, believe you me, I know it, is, of course, the fact that Leon Bailey literally played for the exact team. And for all his goodwill and his try has probably not lived up to expectations or the price tag. I know that. I think everyone that watches this podcast will know that. So, Moussa Diaby stats from the 2022-2023 season. Of course, playing for Leverkusen. Now, I think a key thing here in terms of Moussa Diaby is he does mainly play from the right, as you can see from his heat map. But, and there is a but, he can definitely play on the left and has actually scored a few goals popping up from that left wing position and as well did actually start his career out as a striker so you know how Unai Emery plays our team in terms of like to put it basic we kind of play in like a 4-4-2 but we don't because the left back goes on and then the right back tucks into like almost a third centre back but that number 10 second striker role which Buendia has played the majority of Unai Emery's role Moussa Diaby can probably play there, not to his best of his ability, but the fact that he did play as a striker coming through the youth and in his early teenage years probably means he can play that role. But I think Moussa Diaby's best role now is out in that wide right or the wide left position. I think he could play both positions just as well, but, and there is a but, I think he is a lot better coming in off that right and using his left foot, kind of like in that inverted winger role. And you will see from the heat map that he hugs the touchline, but... He does come in. So he did play 33 
and started all 33 of them games. He did score nine goals and pick up eight assists. So 17 goals and assists in the Bundesliga last season, which I think is very good. And then if you take that on for the previous season, so the season that we brought Leon Bailey, he played 32 games. Again, he's not a very injury prone player, which I think is key. We have been linked to Jeremy Doku, who I actually really, really, really like. He's the type of winger that I would love at Villa Park, but... Jeremy Doku has a lot of injury issues and that is something that I feel like you can't rely on a player like that like it would I think it would annoy you not Emery and annoy a lot of fans if game by game you don't know if one of your players is going to be available he might have an absolute worldy first game of the season we could buy Jeremy Doku he has an absolute worldy away at St James's Park picks up a hamstring injury out for six weeks that's the type of player that Doku is and it's probably why, me personally, I would much prefer DRB over Doku. But if you do then go to DRB the season before last, 32 games, 13 goals and 12 assists. 25 goals and assists last uh, in the season before last. And then this season, he had 17. So he's had 42 goals and assists in the last two seasons in the league. Never mind then the, the fact that he has played Champions League and Europa League in the last two seasons as well. That is an insane record. An insane record. And that's what I think for the money the money that's being touted, which is around 50 million euros, I think it is an absolute no-brainer to bring in Moussa Diaby. I really do. I, I just can't get my head around people that wouldn't want him. If you then do compare that to Leon Bailey last season, 33 games played, 26 of them were starts, only four goals and four assists, which isn't bad. But you think that's eight goals and assists last season. The season before in his first season, he hardly played. One goal, two assists. He picked up 11 goals and assists in the same time period that Moussa Diaby has picked up 42. If you can't get your head around how much of an upgrade this is on Leon Bailey to Moussa Diaby. And also the fact that Leon Bailey and Diaby have actually played in the same team together. Whether it be one on the right and one on the left. Means that Leon Bailey won't now be a player that doesn't play. There, I think there will be some games. And let me know in the comment section down below if you do agree with this. I do think there will be some games where Leon Bailey is actually in the same team as Moussa Diaby. I think we are going to play with two wingers. We are being linked with a lot more wingers than I would traditionally think that we would be. Because you know how we've been playing under Unai Emery, whether it be like that box midfield, you know, the two midfielders that would have normally have been Kamara and Louise, and then Ramsey slightly, slightly more advanced on the left-hand side, and then McGinn tucking in on the right-hand side. I think... You might see a bit of a change this season in that system. I think in some games we are going to play that system because it was very effective and is in fact really effective last season for us. But I think we will change from that in a quite a few games this season. I think Yuri Tillemans signing on free. I don't really see where Yuri Tillemans fits in in the way that we played last season. I think maybe in that McGinn role, maybe, but he doesn't have the athleticism that a McGinn or a Ramsey has. And then in that double pivot, a lot of Leicester fans have been saying that he's not been very good in a double pivot. I think Yuri Tillemans' game is actually advanced. So don't be surprised, in my opinion, if we maybe go to a 4-3-3 this season. I don't know why, I can just see it. I can really see that 4-3-3 happening this season. I think the fact that we've been linked with Harvey Barnes and Ganotto on the left-hand side, also a link to Ferran Torres, which won't go away. And the link with the Ferran Torres is that he will be playing in that central striker role, in that kind of like SS role, shadow striker, or as a left winger. I just think that we're being linked to too many players that are like credible links. I don't go off the, the ball, like the, the links that have no legs in them. I think all of them links, bar maybe the Ganotto link, I think maybe might just be a bit of agent talk to get in that move to Everton. But I think the Diaby, the Brennan Johnson the Harvey Barnes and the Ferran Torres. I think they are, and the Jeremy Docker, of course, because that has come from Fabrizio Romano, which I know a lot of people call him a tapping merchant, merchant, but he doesn't put his name on stuff unless he's got that credible. Like, he knows that as a fact, right? The fact that we're linked with five wingers or second striker roles, whichever you want to call them, I think we are going to play in quite a few games this season with two wingers, whether it be like a 4-3-3, a 4-2-3-1, and you've got to remember as well, we don't know how much of an impact Moreno and Ramsey's injuries are. Maybe Ramsey isn't going to come back the same player. You know, he did break his metatarsal. Maybe Moreno, he is 30, isn't going to come back the same player from a torn hamstring. Has, has he lost that yard of pace, which then means we have lost our attacking outlet from that left-back position. You know, Moreno was always able to drive to the byline. It's, it, I can't believe how good Moreno is. The fact we got him for 12 million quid, by the way. Unbelievable for Unai Emery. What a sign, and that was. Maybe he has lost that yard of pace that he didn't have before. 
you, these are questions that aren't answered yet until the first game of the season. But I just wanted to drop a video on the Moose of the RB link. I think he is a mahoosive, mahoosive upgrade on Leon Bailey. Also, I think something that the RB has over Leon Bailey. If any of you have watched Leon Bailey over the last season, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Leon Bailey is very good when there's space to run in behind. He's actually not that good when he's got to stand up a defender and take him on. Moussa Diaby is very good at standing up a defender and taking him on because Moussa Diaby's right foot is a million times better than Leon Bailey's right foot. So Moussa Diaby isn't looking to always cut in on that left-hand side. He can run to the byline on the right as well, which means... I think I noticed it a lot towards the end of the season that Leon Bailey would be hugging the right-hand side touchline. I noticed it very much... Who was it? I can't remember which game it was that I noticed it a lot. And I always thought that that is the position we needed upgrading because the ball would so many times come to Leon Bailey or Bertrand Traore towards the end of the season and they weren't able to take the man on and beat them. The whole system was set up perfectly to then get the right winger 1v1 against the defender and Leon Bailey would try and take him on and he'd fluff his lines kind of thing. And I, I think that the signing of Moussa Diaby, if we get it, you know, there is the big carrot in the room of the Saudi league that are, are battling for his signature. I'm going to go out on a whimper and say I think Moussa Diaby will come to Aston Villa. He's in the French squad and that. If he goes to Saudi, he won't be in the French squad. He won't play at the World Cup. He won't play at the Euros. And for a player that is only 24, I don't see, bar the massive bank balance increase that he'll get, I don't see the appeal of going to Saudi at 24 for a player like Moussa Diaby compared to someone like a Jordan Henderson that's 33. I just... You can go there for your last payday kind of thing. I get that. But when you're a player that's only really just starting to get into the flow of your career, I don't really see that move. I, I just don't see it. I, I really, really, really just don't see it. If you do disagree as well, let me know in the comment section down below. But I think we are going to wrap up there. Just a little first podcast. Nothing too long because I just wanted to get my thoughts out there on Moose the RB. If you did enjoy this video, please, please, please drop a like on it. Drop a comment down below. And hit that subscribe button to this podcast. That would mean the world to me. It will change a lot over the next couple of weeks when I get things sorted. I just wanted to get the first video out there on my opinion on the RB. So, yeah, let me know. Thank you for watching. Spread the love and positivity. PMA, positive mental attitude. And up the villa. Peace out. One love.